All right, so today I want to talk to you about the secret jazz chord, um, and we'll get into what that is. Um, it's a it's a specific chord voicing that you can use with different bass notes uh, to create six different unique chords. Um, and especially on guitar, what it allows us to have is some really interesting voicings across the whole neck of the guitar. Um, so we're going to go through some examples with the standard progression. Um, first, let's just check out what this voicing is and how we apply it. So the voicing we're going to use today is going to be A flat, C, D, and G. So this is this is position one for the secret jazz chord voicing. And if you check the the link in the description, uh, it'll send you to a PDF where you can download the chord voicings and um, the scales, the melodic minor scales that go with each one. So this this voicing um, and especially in this key is based off the F melodic minor scale. So the F melodic minor scale, if you're not familiar, is an F major scale, but with a flat third. So it's gonna be F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E natural, and F. So uh, again, the voicing we have A flat, C, D, and G. And the thing we have to remember with this secret jazz chord voicing is we're gonna keep the note on the top as G. And each of these uh, four different spots we're going to talk about. So we have this voicing. It's going to be the same notes, but everything else gets reordered except that G is going to stay as our melody note. And I'll explain why in a sec. So for the second voicing, we have D, A flat, C, G. For the next one, we have A flat, C, D, G. Up here in like seventh position. Then we're going to have as the last one, the fourth one, uh, D, A flat, C, G. So we have these ones. This one is a little bit of a stretch. Just make sure you're turning your hand to the side if you're having trouble. You don't want to be uh, perpendicular. Just turn it and you'll get it. All right, so what's interesting about this group of notes, um, these four notes, is if we apply different bass notes, then we can get a whole bunch of chord types um, and really cool voicings. Uh, these chords work as cool voicings when we apply different bass notes. So let's go through it. So if we if we start with our open E string and then apply this voicing, that's an E altered sound. So we have E and then this A flat could be thought of as a G sharp, our third. Our C is either a sharp five or flat 13. The D is our flat seven and G is our sharp nine. So all of a sudden we have four really cool E altered voicings, E7, sharp nine, if you want to think about it, instead of just the classic uh, guitar Jimi Hendrix chord. Um, so let's keep going. So now we have F as our bass note. And this is going to be a really good F minor, F minor 6, 9, F minor major 7 kind of sound. Uh, and that makes sense because this is a F melodic minor scale. So if we have F into the bass, we would expect to have um, an F minor sound using this voicing. So if we go through the notes, thinking of F, we have A flat is the minor third, C is the fifth, D is the sixth, and then G is the ninth. I'm going to switch the voicing to this one down here and put the bass in. And we get a nice F minor. Um, this can be used a lot if you're ending a song in minor. Uh, a quick note there, you don't really want to use it too much uh, as a replacement for a Dorian sound. It's more like a minor one chord sound. Although it could be in some instances. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. Uh, if we move our F, the next bass note we're going to have that works with this um, is G. So if we have G and this voicing, we have an A flat, which is the flat nine, C, which is the 11, D, which is the fifth, and G again. So just looking at that, it doesn't really seem like it has doesn't really seem like it has much of a chord there, right? Because what we're missing the seventh, and we don't have a third. Um, but what you can use this for is a sus flat nine sound, um, which can be used, and you'll hear this when it's like a pedal point, where you have a that kind of sound. You can apply here where you have to give some tension. 
Um, so sus flat nine is really cool. Um, it can it can replace in some instances a dominant sound. Moving on, we have A flat. So obviously with this one we have A flat again. So that's just the root. We have C, which is the third. D is going to be the sharp eleven in A flat, and then G is our major seven. So this is going to be an A flat major seven sharp eleven. Um, after I go through these chords, I'll, I'll play some examples for you. Um, all right. So moving on from there, if we have B flat, we have uh, an A. Our A flat is the flat seven. C is going to be the nine. D is the major third, and G is our thirteen. Voicing. Um, most guitarists will know this B flat 13, but especially if you're playing, say, like an F blues or something, um, this is probably the only B flat 13 you're like used to grabbing. It's just always here. Uh, and so now with this secret jazz chord, you have that B flat 13, that one, that one, that one are all B flat 13s. Um, and especially once you practice the scales in each of these positions, then you can really start playing through. B flat 13 sound anywhere um, and we're not going to apply this to any key but you can obviously do that and I'll give you sort of a cheat sheet at the end all right so after B flat the next one we have is going up to D so if we think of this with D in the root so we have a flat is gonna be our flat 5 C is our flat 7 we have D again which is the root of our this D chord and then G which is the 11th so again, we don't have a third here. We, we're not really sure exactly what kind of chord, um, but what it's used for a lot, this voicing would be a D half diminished sound. So D minor seven flat five. Um, if we switch to our second position voicing, we can kind of hear that a little bit better. And if you move this G back into an F, then it's your minor seven flat five. So all we're doing is really taking that F and moving it up to G. So it's a really nice sound for uh, minor 7 flat 5. So that's our six, six different um, chords we can get out of this one uh, group of notes. It's not quite a voicing because we are changing some of the orders, but we are keeping that G melody. And so let's talk about the reason for that. When we're thinking about these, using these chords um, in real time or on a progression, we need to know how to apply them. So you're not having to practice these six different ones in all keys and make it a little bit easier for ourselves. So the way you can think about it is based on that melody note. So if I want an altered chord sound, I just have to, I just have to find where that melody note is my sharp nine or flat third. So if I'm thinking E altered, I find G and then I play the chord voicing there. Right? So if I have, let's say I want uh, C altered, I'm going to go, okay, well, the sharp nine of C is E flat. So I go E flat. And then I get my E flat um, melody note for my C alt. And I can grab that anywhere. E flat. Um, and so we're going to take that and apply it to each of these six chords. So for the altered chord, you're finding it from the sharp nine. From the minor chord, when we had F minor, we had a G melody. So that's from the ninth. So if I want to find A minor nine, right? I could play this voicing. I'm playing B on the top, and I'm using my open A string. Um, moving on, if we're finding a sus flat nine, we would do it from the root. If we're doing it from a major seven sharp 11 sound, we're trying to find the major seventh. Does that make sense? So if I want a D major seven sharp 11, I find C sharp, because that's the major seven, and then I can play my my voicing there. I'm playing the I'm playing the bass note for you, um, so you can hear the voicing a bit easier. But in actual practice, most of the time I wouldn't play the bass note with that. You're just playing the top four notes. Um, so that's major seven. Going on to the uh, dominant thirteen sound, that's finding the thirteenth. So some of these, what's what's cool about them is. If you think about the kind of chords you want, oh, I want a minor nine, I find the ninth to get that. If I want a, a sharp nine sound, I'm finding the sharp nine. Um, if I want a major seven sharp 11, I'm finding the major seventh. 
So it really ties in and is a bit easier to remember that way. So again, with the B flat 13, we're finding the 13th. So let's say I want D flat 13. Um, the 13th of D flat is B flat. So I'll find a B flat and play my voicing. Or, bass. or in other spots. You might actually recognize this voicing if you've played a nine chord with your pinky out, it's that part. It's that top half of it. And then the last one we have is the half diminished sound. Um, and for that, we're finding the fourth. So that's the only one that doesn't really quite apply to what the name of the chord is, but it's easy enough to remember once you've practiced it a bit. So for, we did D half diminished with our G as the fourth of D. Um, let's say I want a G half diminished. So the fourth of G is C, so I'll find a C and I play one of those four voicings. Um, let me do one down here so you can kind of hear what the, what the sound of it is. So if we had... Or up here, usually I'll play it here or here. There you go. It works pretty nice for that. So we get into some interesting things. Again, um, download the, the PDF so you can see these voicings and the scales that go with them. I'm not gonna just run them for you right now. Um, it'll make kind of a boring video. Uh, and let's take a kind of a standard progression. So let's say we're doing a, a minor two five, right? We have, let's do it in key of C. So we have D half diminished and G altered. And then say it goes to C minor. Like a C minor nine or six nine sound. Well, applying these voicings for the D half diminished, we find the 11, which is G. Then for G altered, I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna find the uh, flat third for G, which is B flat. And so after that D half diminished, I'm just gonna move up a minor third because my G is gonna become a B flat. And then for C minor nine, I'm gonna find the ninth. So that would be a D as the melody note. So I can have these cool voicings anywhere on the guitar and I'll, I'll play them in all the different spots. Um, so actually let's start here. So we have a G for our D half diminished, B flat for our G altered, and then D, let's see if I can grab it. Yeah. So you have, and that's a bit more interesting than just the standard. And especially because we have it in multiple areas. So we have, uh, again, we have for D half diminished. And then let's do um, here. So we have uh, G again, so G, B flat, and then C minor 6 9. Um, and then let's see some other ones. We have G, uh, B flat, just moving up the voicing. And then two. Right? So as you can see, it gives you a lot of positions for this. Um, so that's it for today's video. Um, in another one, if you guys want to see more, um, I have some lines that cover each of these different positions, um, ascending lines and descending lines, uh, and a PDF for that. So if you like that, um, if you'd like to uh, see more of this educational content, just in the comments below, let me know what you'd like to see. All right, thanks.